All right, so remember last week, I started talking to you about that we should have separate schools for smarter kids. Now, hopefully you wrote some notes down, then we'll get to those in a moment. Um, let's have a look at this topic from the affirmative side to start with. Now, from the affirmative side, uh, well, actually from both sides, there are a couple of words that we need to identify and work out exactly what we're talking about here. Uh, what are the most important ones? Can you smile this? Yep. Okay, um, we're going to try and think what are topics, oh sorry, what are words that are not really, don't really need to be defined. For example, um, do we know what kids are? Okay, within the topic this might become important, but when you start talking about humans that go to school, are you going to get a team that argues with you on that and go, actually they're not kids? No. So, okay, what are the words therefore that are really going to cause a problem in this topic? People are going to agree kids are kids. Their age might become important, and I suggest you it will. Um, these ones are all standard. Standard, probably, as we talked about last week, the we in this topic becomes important. Because who are we talking about? What is the we in this topic? Uh, separate schools, smarter kids. So, what are the most important words? Probably not kids at this stage, yep. Smarter. Exactly. That's probably the most important word in this whole topic. Smarter. What are we going to decide smarter is? How is smarter different from, let's say, talented? How is smarter different from gifted? Or is it? Or isn't it? That's going to be an important thing. Because if we look at schools for smarter kids, are we talking about sporting ability? Are we talking about, you know, the ability to play games or chess or or whatever, like how are we going to define what smarter is? So this is a pretty tricky topic in a way, because how one side decides what smarter is and what we're going to include and not include is going to be the difference maybe in this debate. But anyway, what can we do as an affirmative side? This is important as well, separate. Okay, completely separate. Uh, Alright, so talk about words. Next part. My question to you is, when we think about separate schools for smarter kids, don't we already have it? Yes or no? That's a yes or no question. Do we already have separate schools for smarter kids? My goodness, what, what is James Roos then? So anyone can go to James Roos. I can just put in my application and I can go to James Roos. Or do we argue that that's a separate school? Okay, there we go. So, that's getting it really a little bit closer to what we need to talk about. There already is separate schools for smarter high school kids. Would we agree on that? Because they're selective schools, therefore, you need to be smarter to get into these schools. So there are. So that's not clearly what we're talking about in this debate. So if we're not talking about high schools, what therefore must we be talking about? Primary schools. Now, are there separate primary schools for smarter students? By and large, no. Some private schools might argue yes, but by and large, to get into a primary school, you don't need to do a test and therefore get in, or not get in. You pretty much, if you've got the money or you're in the area, you get to enroll. So, we need to decide as an affirmative team that this is a good thing, that we actually need to have separate schools for smarter primary school kids. New word for today, stakeholders. And it's a word that you're gonna to need to become familiar with very quickly and start to think about. When we talk about stakeholders in a debate, it's who do these changes impact? Who are the people that are involved? Now, we're talking about school kids. Think about everyone that's involved if something changes at a school. And here's how you work it out. I need you to think about something that starts off incredibly small. So let's say you or the student. Quickly, just come in. Let's say you or the student. Quickly, just run across. I Okay. Okay, come back at the end. Off you go. All right, so um, how we work out the stakeholders is we look at individuals first. So... Stakeholders in schools, students or the individual. So think about yourself. Who next is impacted by a change? 
students, yourself, who, who next? Yep. Parents and teachers? Ex yep, two separate categories. Parents are impacted, teachers are impacted. Who else? Beyond that, think bigger. If we make a change like this, it impacts so many other things. These are the stakeholders in the debate. We need to address each of them. How does this look? If we change this, how does it look for kids? How does it look for teachers? How does it look for parents? How does it look for? Yes, up to the government. We could even include their principals, okay, beyond the sort of teaching thing. What's it look like for them in their schools? What's it look like for the government? What's it look like for the community at large? What does it look like for Australia? Maybe. Do we need to look at what does it look like for the world? Probably not. Never debate the whole world. We haven't got enough time, you can't do it, we're not going to do it. So never start talking about the whole world in a debate. Yes? Yep, uh, but that's a separate factor. If we start looking about how does this impact money, that's a whole separate sort of thing. So just at the moment, what people does it impact? Students, teachers, parents, the community, at large around the parents, maybe principals, maybe the government, things like that. There are stakeholders in the debate. Yes? Yep, that's once again, that's a whole separate issue because once again it's on money, okay? All right, next. As the affirmative team, remember we're changing this. We're gonna introduce smarter kids into primary school, all right? What is the advantage in doing this? We can't be an affirmative team and argue for this change if there's no advantage. So we need to think about it and go, okay, if we do this, if we put smarter kids in a separate school, how is this gonna help not only them, how is it gonna help others? How is it gonna help teachers? How is it gonna help maybe even the community? Things like that, how's it gonna help, yeah? Well, for the smarter kids, it's gonna help them, they'll be with other people that are in which probably in a more competitive environment. Okay. Which will um, kind of like, get, and they'll be learning harder stuff, so they'll, like a all right so we can start thinking about all right we can start teaching these kids at the level that they're at all right we can change that <clears throat> we can give them a different curriculum we can move them at their their rate that they need to be moved at we can start tailoring their needs and education to what they need because they're going to be grouped together they're going to be different abilities yes but it's not going to be as wide in the abilities isn't it? Yeah, what else? And also, for the people who maybe are struggling a bit more with the school, they'll be with more, not so much around people who are just teaching the teachers will find it easier because then they can focus yeah. on the teaching and That's right. So, and that's a really good thing about this topic. When you're changing this as the affirmative, you don't want to only talk about the smarter kids. And that's what a lot of affirmative teams will do. Oh, smarter kids get this, smarter kids benefit this way, smarter kids do it, smarter, smarter. Great. But... What about the kids who aren't? So you've got to, even though you're arguing for this change, you have to look at it from both sides. This not only helps our smarter kids, it helps the kids that aren't quite as smart. Please don't say dumber kids, because that just feeds into the negative hand of maybe just going, so you're calling people dumb. So you never want to put down the other side, but you never want to build up the other side, the smarter side so completely that you can't say, actually this benefits everyone. This is not just good, for the kids that are smarter, this is how it helps those kids that aren't. Because what happens when you start taking a group of kids away? What, what can be maybe one of the problems? We remove all the smarter kids out of uh, primary school, and what happens then? Do the other kids just accept it? Do you think um, you know, they're gonna feel bad about themselves? Like what's, what can be some problems, yeah? Okay. Okay. Yep. So, what if the smarter kids end up being in those leadership type roles because they're responsible generally and they want to do those things? What happens when they leave the school? That's a good side for the negative. Actually, the negative team can start talking about stuff like that. Okay. When we remove it, what do we lose? Okay. And that's one of the negative things to, to focus on. All right. Next. Now, as an affirmative team, what is the change gonna be? I'll just give you a couple of moments to think about it. You need to think about how does this actually work? 
This is where you start building a thing which is called a model. Would it be acceptable, just think about this, is if tomorrow the government went, right, um, separate schools for smarter kids, starting Friday, your child is enrolled in whatever school, and they're going there. Think about how that works or doesn't work, just for a moment. Where are the problems? Shut this window. Can we do that? Can we do that? Can we just pull all the kids out and go, Friday, you're at this school, it's a smarter school, it'll be better for you. We've agreed it's better for you. Can we do that? What's the problem? Yeah. Uh, it's not my problem, but it's a certain plan based around that school's events and also the fact that certain people can only get to a school because it is set in a certain condition. Exactly. Cut off certain but I think you'd also agree on the affirmative side that even when students get into an OC class, could we agree they travel sometimes quite a distance to be in that class? Yeah. So sometimes travel cannot be a factor. If you really want your child to be in a particular class, they'll travel. Not unreasonably, but they will travel a further distance than their local area. Well, Would we agree with that? The problem is, if, yeah. you have, if they, you're saying your, your um, child has been downgraded to a lower level of school, yeah. then if they are forced to do that, generally one of the only reasons that the OC um, travels that far of a distance is yep. because the parents think they're getting a better education. Exactly. So you're Which basically is, saying yep. to them, your child has been downgraded, he's not going to the same Okay, so when, what we're not going to do, and don't do this as an affirmative team, what you're not going to do is suddenly announce a school is a separate school and then rip all the kids out that don't quite make that criteria. That I don't think you could sell as an affirmative team. I think what you'd be better off selling is there's a smarter, better school and we're going to move you to that. I don't think you want to start taking kids out of a school to say, you're not smart enough to be here, now you need to move to a different school. Don't attack it in that way as an affirmative team because that just really lends into the negative team of what, there's going to be a roll call Friday morning and if you don't make the cut, you're at a different school and we're going to march you out the gate. Think about how would the community react to that? How would parents react to that? How would teachers react to that? What's, that's just going to get a whole lot of people angry. Where What we're used to as a society is people win something, get awarded something, move on to something. We kind of, we structure ourselves in that way. So if we can move on to something better, we like that. That works for us. Okay, do you see that? Yep, all right. So, how are we gonna manage this? Once again, as an affirmative team, we've created these separate schools for smarter kids, and we haven't even begun to talk about how do we find these kids? That's one of the biggest things in this topic. How? All right, I want you to think about that as we talk about it. What makes a kid smarter? Because I tell you what, a negative team is gonna, that's really well trained is gonna listen out for this and go, how do you know? Who will you miss? How will you know you get this right? Remember, in order for a negative team to sometimes win a debate, they only just need to prove that your idea does not work. It won't work and it can't work or you've attacked it from the wrong point of view. Or, one of the greatest things you can do as a negative team, it's not necessary. It's not necessary, this, we don't need this. And for this topic, and I know I'm jumping a little bit ahead because we're not talking about the negative side yet, one of the biggest things that you have in your side as a negative team is we have this in high school and that's good enough. This is why it works in high school, this is why we have it in high school, and this is why it doesn't need to change at a primary level. And this is why it shouldn't. I actually think this is probably easier to win from a negative side than an affirmative side, though very winnable at an affirmative side. But you've got to prove that it is beneficial beyond all kind of reasonable doubt in a way. You've got to prove that the benefits far outweigh over not having it. Okay? So, um, let's just move on. We'll come back to it. Oh, no, that's my last point there. Okay. All right. Let me flip back. So, Thinking of a reasonable time frame. You're all affirmative team. Okay, we're all on the affirmative together. We want to do this. Let's imagine we have the funding, we have the schools built, or we're getting the schools built. When do you think we can reasonably introduce this? We can't rip out the kids and put them there Friday. When could we do it? When could we do it? Some ideas, yeah. Okay, 
Um, I would actually suggest you do 2019. Is possibly, yeah, you could. Um, you might fall into the negative hands by saying that. I think probably next year would be your wisest thing. Because what you're gonna do, just imagine this, and then imagine you're a negative team to start with. If an affirmative team says, this is important, this will change the face of education, this will revolutionize you know, the world, Australia will be the model for the best education system in the world that's gonna start 2019. And one of the first things you should say as a negative team is, wow, it's so important, they're missing an entire year. Just doing what? Nothing. Letting kids stay exactly where they are can't actually be that important. If it's that important, they'd introduce it next year. Now thinking it's May, if you could get the buildings, it depends on how many kids you're moving as well, but let's say in a small local area, we're gonna trial this. So we could get two or three schools built up. And this is what you wanna do in a topic like this. What you don't want to do as an affirmative team is go, this is going to go Australia wide and it's going to be huge and it's going to... No, you're not going to get all this stuff built. But I tell you what, if you focus on New South Wales, as an example, because that's where we live, focus on New South Wales, you're going to say, we're going to pilot two schools with this. And they're kind of going to be, for want of a better word, our guinea pigs, our experiment, our control sort of thing. And we're going to do this. We're going to remove the smarter kids through various testing or whatever we're going to do to determine that they're smarter. You'll need to discuss this with an affirmative team. What makes you smarter? How are you going to get into these classes? Yes, you have to think about this. Is it going to be, is it teacher's recommendation? Is it the parent's recommendation? Is it um, like NAPLAN testing? Something like that would be fair. The top kids in the, you know, the top bands in NAPLAN are going to get an opportunity to go on these classes. Are we going to force them? Uh, we're going to give them the opportunity. How's it going to work? You suddenly go, yep, yeah, um, yes, you've you've got the high enough uh, band in NAPLAN. You know, come, you know, next year you're with us over at this school. I don't want to go. Yeah, yeah, you go. Do they have to go? Um, yes or no? Like it's it's those kind of stuff that you need to talk about as well. How does it work? And that's sometimes what you miss as an affirmative team. You need to think, this is gonna be a real thing, how does it work? How do I get it running? How, you know, what will it do? Yep, what do you wanna say? Just I think it's important yep. to specify that it's about experimenting because obviously kids would want to stay with their friends and, yep. or if they're local, they would like to stay yep, with maybe. or if their parents work there, they'd like to stay with them. Yep. But I think it's also really important that um, you wouldn't be building all these schools and then Maybe, yeah, maybe. You know what? I have to think that if you sell it well enough yeah. as an affirmative team, you know, information is going to be sent out. Parents are going to get a whole lot of information on it. They're going to get advice of the benefits for their child. It's going to be the like you're going to want your child to go to this. If it's advertised in the right way, if it's you know promoted in the right way, that's what you need to say as an affirmative team. You're going to have parents lining up to get their child in there. It's not going to be wow, you have to go. It's going to be, how does my child get involved in this? How do I get them into this school? This school sounds wonderful. You know, and as an affirmative team, you sell it. Latest tech, best teachers. That's another thing. Who teaches there? How do you pick the teachers? Things like that. Is it just, I might want to go and teach it. Can I just do it because I want to? Is that the best teacher for it? How do the teachers get chosen? How does it all set up? So that's how you have to sell it. The most qualified, best teachers are going to teach there. Um, best resources for everything. We're going to build the whole student, you know, that kind of thing. So if it's sold in the right way, people are going to want to go. But there's plenty of holes in this topic. That's going to give you a really good start as an affirmative team. So modeling at four, starting uh, next year. Okay, next year. Or the selection will start happening towards the end of this year. So then they're already in the school, so they get to know the school, and then they start the next academic year. So I would get them in this year, towards the end of the year, so they get familiar with the school. Last couple of weeks of school. Because what you don't want to do is start them in a whole brand new school, and then you're starting everything new. Start them towards the end of the year when things are slowing down, for the majority of schools, 
then they're ready for the next year. So you're gonna think about that. Where are we gonna do it? We're gonna trial a couple of schools in New South Wales. Okay, these are the benefits, and we think of the benefits that they're gonna get. You know, you're gonna want your kid at this school. All right, let's have a look at the negative side. There's plenty more to discuss on the phone. Let's have a look at the negative side. What should the negative team be talking about in a topic like this? And notice we haven't, we've covered some points of what you wanna talk about, but obviously, in preparing the actual topic, you need to have examples of what you wanna talk about. This is just kind of the ideas. First, now, a word you're gonna get a lot when we talk about negative, the status quo. What's it mean? Keep everything the same. So, straight away, when you're on the negative side of a topic, and you get anything, so this. Remember the affirmative need to change this. They're changing that. We don't have that, and we don't want it as a negative team. So, do we currently have separate schools for smarter kids in primary school? No, okay? Everybody's in it together. We might, within that, have separate classes for smarter kids, would we agree with that? Okay, that gives us a lot of ammunition in this topic because we're kind of already doing what they've said, but on a smaller scale, in a way. We think about why does the system work the way it is? Why is it good that we have smarter kids within primary school and we haven't separated? What's the advantages? That's what we need to think about as negative. What's the advantages in having everybody in together? Yep, quick. Some people can help each other. Exactly. So we've got, if we remove all the smarter kids out of the class, then when we have activities where everybody's working together, then the kids that need that extra bit of help, they don't get the benefits of the things that the smarter kids see and understand and know quickly. So we don't get that peer-to-peer -peer support. That's something we lose. So sometimes in classrooms, when we have that peer collaboration and we're working together, we're gonna lose that, we're gonna lose that stuff. All right, next. Um, so what are other benefits in keeping things the same? Not only that peer-to-peer -peer kind of work, why else? And we touched a little bit on it when you talked about school captains. What are the other benefits like that? Remember we said, you know, predominantly, uh, the school captains are gonna be gravitating towards the smarter kids, the more active ones, the ones that are more involved and wanting to do things. We can lose some leadership stuff. What else do we lose? What else do we lose if these kids are removed? Yep. Um, certain teachers might also want to follow that Yep. So, so better career path. Okay, yeah. Particularly as the affirmative team, if you want to, you could sell it going, okay, this is going to be a whole separate school, smarter kids, we want to encourage the best teachers, we're going to up their pay rate. So if you can prove that you're a teacher that deserves to teach at one of these schools, you're going to get paid better. What teacher's not going to want to do that? Okay? So you might work a little bit harder, but depending on the pay increase, you might get a lot of teachers that want to jump on board of that. So you might, out of the regular mainstream system, lose a lot of good teachers. And then if the affirmative team said that, you could say to a negative team, how is that fair? I mean, how is that fair? Um, you know, uh, it's, teachers at different schools have different things to manage. One teacher at a school might be, you know, working with more kids that it's a struggle just to keep them learning and sitting in their seat versus, you know, a teacher that's in a school where everything is working fine in their class and listens to them. You know, it just, which does that mean that one teacher's better over another? One just might have a completely different group of kids to deal with. So how do you pick those teachers? That falls into a problem as well. Yep, what do you want to say? In the academic clubs with all that like debating and chance, the yep. children in this, the children who've been moved to the school, the clubs might still be better and the ones who really the teachers, they might not actually have an interest. Yeah. Yeah. Look, those separate clubs, like debating, chess, maths olympiad, like whatever else, once again for the affirmative team, you could kick those up in a whole separate school. So you could run more programs like that because it influences or helps a greater range of students. So therefore you could have more of those programs where it's influencing a smaller range of students at a bigger school so it doesn't have that impact or maybe you don't get that many opportunities. You might get more opportunities if there's more students wanting to do it. Yep. Schools are gonna be, um, lots of people would like to go to those schools. Um, lots of people have different likes and dislikes. Yep. So like, lots of people might wanna do like different stuff from like 
That's a constant question. Can schools cater to everybody's needs? If you start grouping students according to their ability, perhaps, maybe that's a big selling point for the affirmative team. You know, like attracts like, so therefore maybe they will have just more educational opportunities because they're more academically motivated to do things. So I would definitely be selling a more expanded curriculum for these smarter schools. You know, you're gonna go in deeper with topics. There's gonna to be more opportunities. You've gotta sell it from a point of view of, it's gonna benefit them so much more than what you currently got. Negative side, you've gotta sell it from the point of view of, what do we lose? What gets taken away? And you can't maybe ever get that back. Yep, I just wanna move on to this stuff quickly. We're almost out of time. Go on. Um, if you if you sort of use up the superior teachers and yep. um, students, then you're gonna have a, a, a bit of a used out, burnt out school, which has gotten meet like relatively good teachers, but still yep. on the next level, which you still need for a school to run successfully. Yeah, so maybe. I think the schools that even if you removed those teachers and those students, you're still gonna have a school that operates and functions. You, you more wanna look at when you take those kids out, what happens to the rest of them, just in general, just in general day-to-day -day education. What actually happens to them? How do they, how will it change as a function of the school? You know, what does it say and what does it do to the dynamic within both the teachers and the students as well? So. Um, also, for the negative side, um, you need, really need to listen to what actual changes that the affirmative team are presenting. So they're going to present a bunch of changes and why, then you need to come back at them with how do you know that these changes are going to be better, how will you rate them, so how do you know you're going to achieve what you're going to achieve. So if you say that educational you know, outcomes are going to be so much better, how are you going to know? Are there going to be separate tests for them? Um, are we still going to compare them to the kids in the mainstream? Like, how does it all work? Why? Why will it work? That kind of thing. And we already spoke about what the cost is. And then, probably a big thing for the negative team, is this change necessary? So arguing that we really don't need it. We've got it in high school. We don't need it in primary school. This is why we don't need it. And we think it'll create just more problems. You think you have this wonderful answer to a better education? All we see is more conflict, more stress, more, you know, kids not feeling accepted. You know, we have OC classes in schools. This is why they work. We also know OC classes um, sometimes join the mainstream, right? What's the benefits of that? Think of it from the other point of view. Remember I said you've got to consider both. So how does one help the other? The negative team, it's strongest in, this is how we both work together and this is how we help. So what are the benefits in having the OC students work with the mainstream students from the point of view that it benefits the OC students? How does that work? How do they get benefited working with um, other students? Yep. They can like, learn to understand how other people think. Yep, a different way of thinking about things. Yep, a different solution. They don't always have the answers. Sometimes a different way of looking at something can help. Um, the other really big thing, and I'll finish on this. Let's say, from the negative point of view, let's say the affirmative get away with this, and there are separate schools for smarter kids. What happens after high school ends? Are we gonna do it for university? No? So we won't do it at the top elite level of education. We're gonna say, we'll have it in primary, we'll have it in high school, and when you're at uni, everybody's back together. Or is university that elite? Because there's all those grades and everything. But then, even if you take it beyond that, what about the workforce? Smarter jobs for smarter people? Everybody still ends up having to work together. All right, so in the end, everybody comes back together anyway. Why not keep them together? You keep them together, everybody learns from everybody. Oh, that could almost be a team line for a negative team. Everybody 
with everybody or everybody learns with everyone. You know, we're all in this together. Please don't sing that song. Okay, something like that. You've got to think as a negative team, what's inclusive and what works and why does it work? All right, um, that's it for today.